Hello there. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar. So today I'll be speaking about gods and melons. So my name is Is. I'm from Pasir Panjang Nursery. So uh, I've been doing uh, fruit trees and edibles for about more than 10 years over there. So for this morning, I'll be speaking about gods and melons and how you can grow them. And also hopefully get to harvest some of your own um, fruits. Okay, so how is everyone today? Hope you are doing well this month in January 2021. Hope the rest of, you, of the year will be a good year for everyone. So, for gods, right? I have a variety of gods and melons here, all over here. So you can see some. So I place them all over here. But for gods, um, how do gods look like? And also, um, what are the functions or uses of gods? So for example, I got some musical instruments here made from gods. So maybe you can use this to ward off evil spirits. Okay, also another one. So this one also made from a god. It sounds a bit like the gamelan music. So these instruments were used in uh, Egypt and Africa. So for their cultural performances and ceremonies. Okay. So for these gods, so I uh, will introduce you to some gods now. So we have a bottle god here. The shape is very unique, like a bottle. And also the winter melon. This is a cut up winter melon and his cousins here. So they are all related. This is a snake god. And the lufa. So this is the lufa. This is another lufa. This is the rich lufa. This is the smooth lufa. So. And also a bitter god here. Okay. So scientific name for um, bottle god is Legionaria, Sicereria. Snake god is Trichocentis. Yeah. Winter melon, Benin Casa, Hispida. Okay. And uh, so I'll show you some. Uh, okay, we have many varieties of gods here. And also the winter melon, you see this, the cut out winter melon. If you want to see a big actual winter melon, this the actual winter melon size. So very heavy. This the bitter melon, winter melon. Okay. Okay. So gods are the oldest cultivated um, food crop. And they were they are basically used as a water vessel. You can see the bottle got here. So you can compare in size. This is the young water god. This is the mature, dried up one. So from light green, it turns to light brown. So you can also hear the seeds are inside the mature water god. So you can collect the seeds for harvesting. And this is uh, used as a vessel to contain water and also um, any wine or any drink that you, you want to carry along with you. And what they got. Okay, so for the lufa. So you can see we got different sizes of lufa here. From the young to the mature lufa. Okay. So and this is the older version of the lufa. So from the young lufa, it matures into this. This is too fibrous. You can't eat this. So you eat the young lufa. So you consume this one or this one. And if you leave it on the wine long enough, it turns brown and ripens to this stage where you can collect the seeds. Okay. And from this, what you commonly see is also this lufa sponge you use to shower. So you use to exfoliate your skin. So you use this in the shower. This is available at the uh, supermarket. 
So from this, you, if you harvest this, you peel off the skin, what is inside is actually a loofah sponge. Okay. Next, we have the winter melon. So this is the winter, cut out winter melon. And this is, I'll show you the mature one. Oh. So this is the big size winter melon from this. And these are the cousins related to the winter melon, also available at the supermarkets. So, and this is a green marrow. So most of them, you just cook them into soups or you can stir fry. This is also candied in uh, Taiwan and India. You put, boil this in syrup and you get the winter melon uh, candies. Okay, so for this winter melon, the seeds are here in the center. This is the white flesh. So you can collect the seeds here. And then for bitter gods, I got many varieties of bitter gods here. So you can see. So bitter gods were introduced. Um, into China from India in the 14th century. This is uh, scientific name is Momo Dika Charantia. Okay, so there are many varieties here. This the Indian variety, the small ones. Then you have the medium sized one and you have the Ch Chinese variety which you can find at the shops. Okay. So bitter gods are actually uh, very good for you. They contain vitamin B and C, zinc and potassium. Okay, so I kept this bitter god here yesterday and uh, it happens to pop open. So you can see the red seeds are inside. This is for harvesting. You cannot consume this because it's uh, overripe. Okay. So you best to consume them when they are young and uh, green. Okay. So how you prepare uh, bitter god is actually you can slice them uh, into slices or rings. And then for this variety, you can cook them, stir fry with turmeric and chili powder until they are crispy. You can eat them as a snack. Okay. <clears throat> and for this one, you can also stir fry and cook in soups. So I'll cut this open and you can see the insides. Okay, this is the cross section of the bitter gut. So the seeds are actually very bitter the inside. So you have to remove the the seeds and you can soak. How do you reduce the bitterness of the bitter gourd? It's actually soaking them in water. Then this helps to reduce the bitterness. So when you cut them into rings, so they will look like that. So if you go to the Yong Tau Fu stalls, right, you will see the fish paste, they stuff it inside. And you can choose one of the items there and you can cook them in the soup. Okay, so at the Yong Tafu stalls. If not, you can just slice them into half. Okay, you have to actually remove the seeds using a spoon. Okay. So it's uh, fibrous and full of seeds inside. You have to remove the seeds using a spoon. You can screw them up. So you get the seeds here. So if you get the right uh, bitter gourd like this one, you can actually see that the seeds have turned red. And when you wash away the red pulp, so what you get is actually the dried, dried up seeds here. You wash and dry them. You can germinate them after a day. So you put them to reduce the bitterness. You soak the bitter gut in water and it helps to take away some of the bitterness. Okay, like this. So after about uh, 10 minutes or so, we are, you can remove them and ready for your stir fry or cooking in soups. So how you prepare? So for yeah, okay, young yeah, dry. Okay, then we also have this kind of god, which are cute and adorable, like me. 
This is the Cuckoo Beta people. Okay. We also have the snake god. So why do they call this the snake god? It's actually uh, wriggly, long and wriggly like a snake. So that's the name, snake god. And the plant is actually over here. It has white flowers. You can see. So growing a god, you need about three to four months to grow and they are pollinated by insects like bees and moths. So how do you germinate the seeds? So you need a planting media. And you take, this media has to be uh, well draining so that water doesn't stay in here for too long. So make sure there's drainage holes at the bottom of your pot that water can flow out. Okay, potting media you can get from your local nurseries or any uh, soil rich in compost. Okay, so how you plant the seed is actually make a hole about 2.5 centimeters deep and you put the seed in. Then you cover it and you water it. Okay, so after this, you put this in a semi-shade location until there's germination, probably about in two to three weeks time, you see the seedling. So then you can transplant them into soil and put it in a sunny location. So always check that the seedling has enough water and sunlight to grow. Okay. So for the habits of gods, right? They are actually... Uh, uh, sprawling plants so you need a trellis like this this is a bitter god plant you can see the yellow pretty yellow flowers and the young bitter god plant on the trellis so you need to construct this trellis using any recycled material like bamboo so it has to be sturdy and secure for your climbing plants so we also constructed um, my CIB colleague community in Bloom colleague has constructed one using the PVC pipes over there, the one with the support and the strings. So the string is actually for the plants to grow up using their tendrils. They will hook on and climb up the trellis. So uh, make sure it's not beside any other plant because it will just latch onto your neighboring plant. Okay. So make sure there's enough sunlight for the plant to grow. It needs uh, adequate sunlight. And also, you have to fertilize them with organic fertilizer at least once a month or every two weeks. You can use uh, organic fertilizer like a bone meal or sheep dung. Yeah, and give them enough water and sunlight. So how do you harvest a god? It's actually when a god has this stem and it starts to turn brown. You can actually um, harvest them. But this one has uh, already matured, so you are actually harvesting this to collect the seeds for propagation. Okay. So inside the loofah, a dried up loofah, has seeds inside. You can actually collect the seeds. And then you can, this is a bottle god. Likewise, it has seeds inside. So you can also collect this. This is a hard shell god. So you can use this as a container to store water. Yeah, if you actually watch the Jackie Chan movie from 1978, The Drunken Master, his master beggar so drank wine from this container. So without the wine, he couldn't fight. Yeah. Okay. So now I will demonstrate the cutting of some fruits. So the bitter god you've already seen. To reduce bitterness, soak it in water. Okay, we've done this already. I'll cut up the, the small Indian variety here. So there are seeds inside. 
So to see whether it ripens, it should turn yellow and pop open, revealing the red seeds inside. So they are very bright and colorful. So uh, they are called bitter god for a reason. They are actually very bitter. So, but they are very nutritious for you and good for health. Okay, high in vitamins and antioxidant. This one. So when you get the red seeds, you actually have to wash away and remove the red flesh and you get this brown seed inside. Okay, like this one over here. So this one is already washed up and ready to plant out. I also harvested this bitter gourd. So this one is ripening. It ripens to yellow. You can see the tendrils here. So they will latch on to your uh, trellis. They need support and they will start climbing. So this one is a very nice variety. This is the white bitter gourd, heart shape. Also, you can give this to your girlfriend, like this, right? Look at the heart shape. Same. Okay, uh, bitter god. So then, uh, this is the angled loofah. They call it the rich loofah or angled loofah because of these ridges. So uh, before consumption, you have to remove the ridges because they are very tough. You can't chew into this. So you have to remove the ridges like this. Then after this, it, it starts to look like a cucumber. So they are all from the same family, Cucubitaceae. Okay. Once it's smooth like that, you can start to cut up. So also uh, whitish center, like a cucumber. So you can either do rings like this. If you don't want them too big, you can slice it into further smaller pieces. Into this. So this... Uh, Snake gods, you can actually cook them with dal, become uh, dal curry, uh, or even with your meat curries. And you can also stir fry and cook them in soups. So all these uh, gods are actually very cooling fruits. And you can, um, on a hot day, you can just cook them to drink as soups. They help to cool you down. Also high in uh, antioxidants. Okay. So we finish with the, this is the rich. Rich loofah. This is the young uh, loofah, the Egyptian loofah. So the inside also a white part with the seeds in the middle. So I'll do another cut. Okay, you see this. This is young, so you can't really see the seeds yet. Uh, you cannot propagate from this uh, edge. So you actually have to take the older uh, loofah. Okay. Older loofah, I'll try to cut this up. Let's see what it looks like inside. So do you all know what it looks like inside? I'll show you. So it's fibrous like this. See, all the black seeds are here. So you shake them up, then you get the black seeds. Okay, so from this, you get your shower loofah. So with the texture suitable for your shower and exfoliation, and the black seeds are inside.
So these are the Lufa seeds, black in color. So you can harvest this for propagation. Okay, also the snake god. How does it look like on the inside? I'll start to cut this up. Okay, this is the cross section. Sits in the similar to the bitter god. So the bitter god looks like this, the snake god looks like this, quite similar, similar in texture as well. So this is also good to cook in your curries and your stir fry, also in soups. Okay. Snake god. And what about the winter melon? So I'll do another cut here. So winter melon is also has the white flesh and the seeds are inside. So you can scoop out the seeds and they look like this. You have to wash the dry and dry the seeds after a day you can uh, actually plant them out. Okay. Okay, so I've cut up almost all the gods and we can move on to melons. So um, what are melons? So you, as you can see, I've got a group of melons here. Pumpkins, honeydews, watermelon, rock melon, and also the plants here. So you can see I have a pumpkin plant over there with the young fruit. So pumpkin plants have yellow flowers and the tendrils are pentangular. That means they are five-sided. You can actually, when you see a pumpkin plant, you can use your fingers to touch the stem. They're actually pentangular. And also the tendrils are 90 degrees to the leaf axil. So how do the flowers look like? I actually uh, pluck or they drop off this morning. You can actually see the flowers here. The flowers are actually edible. You can steam them or use them in your salads. Okay, they have bright yellow flowers and they are propagated by bees. So looking at the melons, which do you think is the sweetest? Honeydew versus watermelon. Let's do a poll. Um, if you have some um, watermelon and honeydew at home, you can taste them now. Let me know. The, we'll consolidate the results through a poll and I'll give you the results uh, shortly. So honeydew versus watermelon, which is sweeter? Okay. And now I'll move on to the history of melons. So uh, watermelons actually, they have been uh, growing in Africa for about 4,000 years. And right now they are available all over the world. So watermelons are sweet. And later you tell me which is sweeter, honeydew or watermelon. So um, the honeydews were introduced in China by uh, Henry Wallace, a US vice president. He was also a uh, um, seed collector. So he brought some seeds along with him when he visited China in the 40s and he gave them to the locals and they started growing them. So China is now one of the largest producers of melons in the world. Okay, almost half the production of melons comes from China. So I think the poll results are ready. So Let's look at the score. Honeydew is 69% and the rest is a watermelon 31%. So honeydew, um, according to most of you, you say that honeydew is sweetest. So this is the honeydew. It's actually, corrected. Uh, it's actually correct because uh, they've done research to say that honeydew is the sweetest melon as compared to watermelons. So uh, a ripe watermelon will be the sweetest. You can actually smell it from here. Yeah, it's very sweet. I should I cut it up? Maybe I can cut it up. So the 
seats are here. So this is what a honeydew looks like. It has a light green texture inside with the white center. Seeds are there. What do you think is this to it? Definitely sweeter than a watermelon. So how do you actually grow melons? I have a watermelon plant here beside me. You can see the young fruit there already formed. So they're actually wine-like plants. Uh, melons require a pH of 5.5 to 7 in the soil. So they need about 100 days uh, to grow from seed to harvest. So about 3 to 4 months, you should be able to get a melon. So they need a sunny location, lots of sunlight. And also the soil should contain uh, organic matter. They prefer um, soil which is well draining and also um, rich in compost. So best to get soil media which is uh, rich in organic matter. They are pollinated by bees. So if you see bees in your garden, you should not chase them away. Let them do the work for you. Let them pollinate your plants. Okay. After pollination, successful pollination, you can get a watermelon plant there. Okay, so the watermelons have uh, yellow flowers and they also need the trellis for support. So they are sprawling plants like the bitter god. They'll be climbing up your trellis. Make sure it's secure and able to uh, let the plant grow up. Also, when the fruit gets bigger, you would need to do a hammock or sling for the fruit to rest on. So if you have a melon, Example, this is a melon. You put it in the middle and you need to construct a sling or hammock for the melon to rest on. So you can use any recycled material like your old t-shirt or stockings and let the melon rest in the middle and keep it off the ground because uh, when they are in contact with the ground, they, can, they may start to rot if the ground is too wet. So as the fruit gets bigger, it's rested properly and you can harvest them and remove the sling. So the sling will be tied to your trellis or a fence to support the weight of the melon. Okay. So melons, uh, when you grow them, make sure they are not stressed out. So reduce stress. So make sure they got uh, adequate water and sunlight and remove the weeds. Make sure there are no weeds growing in your media because weeds take up the nutrition and uh, they fight with your, the plant. So if you let the weeds grow, they will overtake your plant. So remove weeds. Uh, and how do you get sweet melons? You actually should reduce watering uh, two weeks before harvest. So reducing water helps to increase the sweetness in your melons. Okay. Too much water and it will split. So I have a watermelon here. Uh, ideally, you want it full of the flesh, red flesh. So too much water and it will cause the hollowness and split in the middle of the fruit. So what you get is actually a hollow melon. So that's not so ideal. So uh, watch the watering. Too much water and it will split. So Then I also have pumpkin here. This is the inside of a pumpkin compared to the butternut. This is a butternut. This is a pumpkin. So why they call this butternut? Because it's buttery and it has that nutty flavor. So the seeds are here at the bottom. You can collect the seeds from here. Likewise for the pumpkin. You need to scoop out the seeds from here. So the seeds should come out like this. Okay, you can wash the seeds. The seeds are actually edible as well. You can roast them and then uh, add some spice, salt and spice. It becomes a snack. Okay. This is, a, they call this a mass melon or rock melon in some countries or cantaloupe. So they are all related to the honeydew. 
So they have similar texture and the seeds look similar as well. But the marshmallow has this reticulation. So you can see the nice netting on the skin. So um, when you grow melons, there'll be you may come across some pests that attack the melon plant. So uh, common pests would be fruit flies and aphids. So how do you get rid of them? You can actually use neem or white summer oil, or also some uh, sticky fly traps. So uh, when do you harvest melons? So for this watermelon, you can see the yellow marking here on the skin. So this is are ready for harvest, so it's ripe. So you can see all the melons here. This is, you can also see two types of pumpkin here. So the largest uh, giant pumpkin will be the ones used during Halloween in the States. They cover up the, the face on the pumpkin. So the largest one will be, weighs about 1,000 kilograms. Okay, so these are smaller ones. So are melons and gods easy to grow? It depends on the variety. So like the snake god plant there is quite easy to grow. It has uh, pretty white flowers. Also, you need the trellis because they are all climbing plants. Um, the other melons like honeydew is slightly more challenging um, but the results is you get a very sweet melon for honeydew okay and also the mass melon here you can collect the seeds like this scoop them up and you get the seeds here. So these are the marshmallow seeds. You have to wash them, dry them for a day, and then uh, start to plant them out the next day. I have a sample of the honeydew and marshmallow seeds here. So you can see they're actually quite similar in size and always label your seeds because uh, if not, you get mix, mix them up and if you grow a marshmallow next to a honeydew, you may not uh, know which one, which is which. Okay. So to get the best seeds, you, sh you can actually purchase the seeds from a seed pack because some of these uh, varieties are F1 hybrids, meaning they are either seedless or you cannot use the seeds for propagation. So uh, you can purchase them from your local nurseries or get them from some supermarkets. So the label will state which plant this is and the instructions are at the back. How to grow them, uh, the ideal condition, the growth stage and how to look after them and when to harvest. So uh, good luck trying uh, propagating from these seeds and always get from reliable sources. Okay. So maybe uh, you can Tell me uh, which is your favorite melon and got to eat or any good recipes, you can share them with us. And don't forget, bitter gods are bitter, but they're actually very nutritious. You can also, and let's cut up this one. I haven't cut up this, this another variety of the winter melon. I shall cut this up. So this is the cross section. So you can see similar to the cucumber and the winter melon here. Okay, then I'll cut this into a cross. So you get the inside like this. Again, uh, to collect the seeds, you have to dry them out first. So when they get the brown skin like this, then it's ready to be harvest. Okay. So these are the young seeds. How you cook them is actually in uh, soups and also you can stir fry.
cook them in curries as well. So this is the other winter melon. Okay, if you want to grow a winter melon, you need a very large support because the winter melon will grow into this size. Make sure your trellis can support the weight and also stand by the sling. This is the hammock or sling to carry the weight of your winter melon. Okay, it needs a very sturdy structure to take this full weight of this melon. Okay. And again, to, for your planting media, make sure it's uh, well draining so that the water can flow through. Okay. So if you have dry seeds like the, this lufa seed, okay, you can just plant them indirectly and cover. If you get wet seeds like this one, like the bitter god seed, you have to prepare by washing them and remove the pulp okay versus the dry seed like this one these are ready to be planted out straight away okay okay so you can see i have a variety of the bitter god plants here from the small one to the large one so if you leave your bitter gourd plants, the fruits will ripen out and they will just pop open. They will drop to the ground and pop open. So if you want to harvest them, make sure they are young, slightly bigger than this. So these are young bitter gods. Okay, They will sprawl and also they will smother your other neighboring plants. Make sure they have support and uh, they will creep all over. But the bitter gourd has pretty yellow flowers and also the fruit. This is still too young to harvest. Let it grow and mature to a bigger size. Before it reaches this, this is already too ripe. Okay. So I'll be also cutting up this cute little pumpkin now. Okay. Okay, so this is the inside. You can compare this to a bigger pumpkin. So they're actually very similar. So the flowers are edible. The seeds are edible as well. And you can make pumpkin soup with this, or you can roast the seeds to be a snack. Okay, you can put them in salads. So the pumpkin is very nutritious as well, high in vitamin B and C, and also potassium. Okay, the melon. Water got. So for watermelon seeds, you should get them from the seed pack. These are the so-called hybrid or seedless watermelons. So these are, they have white seeds. But they are considered seedless because you cannot use this uh, for germination. They should be the brown, brown seeds. So get them from the seed pack available at your nurseries and supermarkets. Okay. So are you all ready with the questions? We will begin the Q&A session next. So for example, I have one question here. Why aren't my melons or God's fruiting? There are lots of flowers, but no fruits. So this is a common question we always get. Why aren't my melons or God's fruiting? So you see the flowers, for example, the snake God over there. You have the flowers, but you need pollination uh, in your garden. So ideally, you should be having bees and moths in your garden to pollinate these plants. So without successful pollination, you won't get the fruit. So if you see bees, do not chase them away. Let them do the pollination. So you can also uh, use hand pollination if you want to pollinate them manually. So my colleague Lillian, in last month's masterclass, she mentioned how to do hand pollination in uh, how to grow um, cucumbers and beans. 
Okay. Question two. How soon can I get a bottle god if I start a plant from seed? So for a bottle god plant like this, you need uh, about three to four months. You can get a god like this one. So you should uh, give them a sunny location. Then um, after germination, in about two to three weeks, you get the young seedling. So within three months, if you let it grow and creep up the support, you should get a god plant. Okay. Next question is, how big a space is needed to grow melons? So melons are sprawling plants like this sample over here. This is a watermelon plant. So if you grow melons beside each other, if you have a watermelon, honeydew, marshmallow beside each other, they will sprawl all over the place. You need a trellis and also enough space for them to climb on. If not, they will latch onto each other or your neighboring plants. So you have to keep them tidy, control the tendrils. Here, these are the tendrils. tendrils. Do not reach, uh, you can control them by tying up your trellis and give them direction to where to grow. If there's another plant here, it will latch onto your next plant and it, will, it may smother your neighboring plant. Okay. What kind of fertilizer would need for melons to grow? So, um, because if you are going to consume the melon fruit, then it should be organic. So, you can use organic fertilizer like bone meal or sheep dung. If you use the inorganic fertilizer to boost the growth, it's possible, but make sure you rotate with organic fertilizer. Okay? They need uh, nitrogen and your NPK, nitrogen, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, okay, in order to grow and flower. Keep them in a sunny location. If not, it won't flower. You also need the pollinators to come. Okay? So without adequate sunlight, uh, it won't produce the flowers and the uh, leaves will turn yellow. Okay? And another question is, is it advisable to grow melon or gods and my corridor pots? You can try growing them. Uh, as mentioned, if you grow a lot of uh, melons and gods along the corridor here, uh, make sure they don't go onto your neighbor's uh, side of the corridor. Uh, we don't want any arguments with your neighbors. And keep them neat and tidy. And also, they may block out light at your corridor if they grow too tall and start to sprawl all over the place. Okay, keep them neat and tidy and give them direction. Okay, um, also they need lots of sunlight. If your corridor is shady, uh, it may not produce healthy plants. Okay. And next is, can I grow melons in Leka instead of normal soil, like in hydroponics? You can grow melons in a hydroponic style. Make sure uh, there's nutrition in the water and also sunlight. You have to put your hydroponic system in a sunny location. If you put them under shade, uh, it may not produce healthy plants and it may not flower. Okay. And I, I see another question. How many hours of sun for gods and melons? So you need at least uh, six hours of sunlight, at least more than half a day of sunlight for your plants to grow well. Uh, too shady and they won't be healthy and you may get uh, pests and diseases like sutimo and your fruit flies or aphids may start to come onto your plant. Okay. So next question is, I try to grow bitter gourd at my balcony on the 16th floor but flowers keep dropping off before they can mature. So some advice. Okay, so premature dropping of flowers. Likewise, uh, you need the ideal location. So 16th floor, maybe it's too windy for your plants. So um, maybe you can try blocking off some of the wind. Um, the wind may just blow off the flowers or it's too stressed out, too stressed, and the plants will just abort the flowers. So they need enough sun, water, and nutrition for the plants to grow well. Okay, too much wind, too little sunlight, too much rain is no good for your plant. 
Okay. And do melons and gods easily get infected? And what do I apply if I see pests attack? Okay. So if your plants are healthy, they can ward off all the plants and diseases. If it's uh, stressed out and not healthy, they may get infected. So if you get uh, aphids or fruit flies, you can use sticky traps for the fruit flies. And you can use neem oil to spray on your plant. But try not to sp spray too much for the plant. You can use uh, organic pesticide like neem oil or white summer oil. And you can also use a soapy solution. Mix your dishwashing liquid with water. Um, use more water so it's not too soapy. Spray it on the plant. And remove with uh, tissue paper. Remove the aphids if you see them. Then uh, check every two days. Make sure the aphids don't come back. If your plant is fully infested, it's best to uh, remove them away from your garden. If not, it may uh, infect your other plants. Okay. Next will be my bitter gourd stems are turning yellow and drying up. They have also stopped fruiting. Is it time to remove them and start over? Okay, if your bitter gourd plant, this one is a, we have some nice looking here because they are healthy and grown in the ideal location. So if your stems and leaves start to turn yellow, uh, uh, you have to check your plant condition. Uh, is there too much stress for the plant? Are you watering correctly? Did you apply enough fertilizer? Okay, lack of fertilizer means there's less nutrition for your plant and they won't have the green leaves. So lack of nutrition and your leaves start to turn yellow. Also too much watering. If it's, your media is too wet, the plants can turn yellow. Okay, likewise for two liter water. So always check your media. How do you check if it's containing the right amount of water? Always do the finger test. If it's moist, you can feel the dampness in the, your media. If it's hard and compact, you need to add more water. So preferably water in the morning or evening, not around noon when it's too hot, it may scorch your plant. Okay, always check your media, make sure it has enough water. Another question is, my bitter god plant did not produce any flowers. Why is this so and what can I do? Okay. So to produce flowers for your bitter gourd plant, you need to have the right amount of fertilizer. Apply every month or every two weeks some organic fertilizer. Okay, give it enough sunlight and you will see it produce nice flowers like this. With pollination, you should be able to get some nice bitter gods. Okay, so if a melon splits, before ripening, is there a way to save it? Unfortunately, you have to take it away already because it's already split. So if it's ready, you can actually taste if it's ready for consumption and ripe, you can actually uh, have the fruit first. If it's already damaged, then best to discard it. Okay, so you can actually start to grow your melons and gods because they are annuals. You can, when your plant starts to show it that it has already aged, it's already too old, you can always start again from seeds. Okay, so you have a fresh plant with a correct harvest. Okay, I don't have neem oil or pesticide at home. Um, any other advice to prevent pests from attacking my melons? Okay, if you don't have neem oil or pesticide, so you can, like you mentioned, you can use uh, sticky traps or you can use the soap solution, okay? If not, you can also purchase um, this organic pesticide from the supermarket or local nurseries. So what is the purpose of drying seeds first before sowing? So you have dry seeds like this one. These are clean and dry, so you don't have to wash them. Seeds, wet seeds like this. If you have wet, wet seeds like this, 
best to wash them, dry them, so that there's no uh, fruit sediment left over. This will attract the pests to come into your media. So you will get, uh, sometimes you'll get ants and other pests because they can smell and taste the fruit uh, left over on the seeds. So best to wash them, dry them, keep them clean and uh, sow them after one or two days. This is to prevent pests and fungal diseases from attacking your seeds. Okay? So can I apply both organic and inorganic fertilizer for melons? What is a good guide for feeding the soil? So you can rotate your fertilizer, um, inorganic fertilizer, the ones that are pink or green in color, sometimes labeled as NPK. Uh, read the label, they will state the content of the fertilizer. So for organic fertilizer, if you are going to consume the fruits, use organic fertilizer. So preferably the month before harvest, you should be using the organic fertilizer. The inorganic fertilizer is to boost the plant growth uh, for it to produce flowers and uh, green leaves. Okay, so when do you feed the plant? Should be uh, monthly or every two weeks. Every two weeks will be a smaller portion of the fertilizer. Less is more. Okay, don't apply too much. What is the best way to dry loofah to make it into loofah sponge? Okay, here on the plant until it dries or cut it when still green and sun it under control environment to prevent rotting and pests. So you can leave it on the plant. If there's uh, no disturbance on the plant, you can just let it dry from this. It will dry up to this on the plant. Or you can actually try keeping this, set this aside, dry it, let it dry in the sun until it turns brown like this. Then you can shake this and you can hear the rattling of the seeds. That means it's fully dry. Then you can peel off the skin. And then what you get is the fibrous texture inside. And after a while, so you clean it. And then you can use it as the loofah sponge in your shower. Okay. Like this. Another question is, if I want to use the seeds from cucumbers bought from the market, should I get them from the brown cucumber or can the seeds from the green cucumbers be used as well? Actually, for cucumbers, best to get the ones from the seed pack because uh, we're not, not sure which variety of cucumber that you purchase from the supermarket. And they may look, they may be young, youngish like this, and these are not viable for germination. So these are too young, okay? And you may not get enough seeds to plant out. So best to get from the seed pack and it tells you which variety of cucumber you're growing, okay? So better to stick with seeds from the seed pack. Okay, any more questions? Yep, there's one more. So do we need to prune the melons or gods? So for your example, you have a sprawling plant like this. What, how do you take care of this? Is to prune away all the dead leaves and the dry tendrils. Okay. So ideally, every week you should be checking on your plant. So remove all the dry leaves and tendrils and also train your plant in the direction you want them to grow, okay? Do not uh, let them sprawl all over the place onto your neighbor's property or over to your neighbor's side because uh, when it starts fruiting, then uh, your neighbor will say, this is my uh, bitter god melon because it's in my property, okay? So keep it under control and let it train it to where you want it to go. Remove all the yellow dry leaves and tendrils, okay? Make sure it's uh, healthy by giving it all the ideal conditions. So if you are a beginner, uh, someone is asking, I'm a beginner gardener, which is the easiest god and melon to grow. So you can try the bitter god, should be easy to grow, uh, depending on your, where you get your seeds from. 
So uh, no harm trying. Just try if the first rounds uh, don't germinate, you can keep trying, uh, get more seeds from different varieties and do experiments to see which is more viable. Okay. So some seeds are not viable, then you just move on to another variety. Okay. Uh, good luck trying. Don't give up hope. There's always hope. So keep trying. Okay. What else? Any more questions? So if your melon splits, so can you save it? Again, uh, if to prevent splitting right, of your melons, so make sure you hold the watering. So this will increase the sweetness. Also, too much watering may produce the split in your melon fruit. Okay? So always watch the watering. Use the finger test in your media. Okay? If your fingers feel them, that means there's enough moisture in the soil media. Okay. Also, another question is, okay, this will be the last question for today. So can we grow a zucchini plant in Singapore? Any tips? Uh, I haven't actually tried growing a zucchini plant, but it should be from the cucumber family. So um, just try. Make sure um, no, you know where you get your seeds from. If they are immature seeds, then they won't be viable. So get them from a seed pack and germinate them in the right media. Okay. So germinate them in the right media, in the correct depth, about 2.5 centimeters. Water them, put them in the right location, a semi-shade location. So hopefully after about two to three weeks, your plant should be uh, sprouting. So good luck trying. Okay. So, okay, that was the last question. So thank you for watching today's webinar. So you, this video is actually available tomorrow. You can watch it again on YouTube, NPARKS SG YouTube from tomorrow. I also did a video on uh, Jackfruit and his relatives for the Community Garden Fest. You can watch that one if you like Atokapas. For more gardening resources, you can go to the NPARKS website or NPARKS SG YouTube. So I uh, wish you a good day. Have a good weekend, a good year ahead. And uh, I'll say, there's always hope. Thank you for watching. Like and subscribe. Thank you. Have a nice day.